Hey guys, Kylie here from CKC Knives. The uh, the ongoing YouTube debate and you know any knife form really about grind geometries and all these different things and everyone's got different beliefs and that's fine and different opinions and that's fine too. But there is a point when simple facts and reality do come into play and it can be tiresome when people speak to the public like they're experts but their facts simply just don't add up to mathematical correctness and they have a lot of people that just don't bother checking the facts scientifically for themselves using mathematics and seeing if what's being told to them is correct and they just believe it's correct <clears throat> and that's a bit of a shame and I recently watched a segment of a video that someone linked me to speaking about chisel grinds and V edges and how there are advantages to one or the other based on specific edge angles and I want to just cover some actual facts using CAD reality fixed numbers something that anybody with a ruler some calipers whatever you know you, you can work this out yourself I'm doing it in CAD because it's very easy to get specific accurate numbers but a demonstration was made trying to promote why a chisel grind can be better than a V grind because for the same 30 degree angle the shoulder is much higher on a chisel grind than it is on the V grind and that the V grind would be half the height and I'm going to just basically show how that's incorrect and demonstrate what correct is so right here we've got a five millimeter wide piece of steel with an exact 30 degree chisel grind on it and we're dealing with real specific numbers here so if we take a chisel grind with an exact 30 degree angle and measure it out it reaches the full five millimeter width at 8.6 millimeters this is very easy for you to replicate and test for yourself 8.66 millimeters reaches full width if we then take a V edge and give it the exact same 30 degree inclusive edge angle it reaches the full five millimeter thickness at 9.31 millimeters it is in fact a higher grind when it reaches full thickness and therefore it can travel deeper than the chisel for the same given resistance now I've got a couple of other things on the side here that you can look at this is to demonstrate how they're pretty much identical apart from direction of the rest of the blade this is the V grind tilted until one of the bevels is perpendicular to the cut just like the chisel grind and this blue line is an indicator of the point in position where going perpendicular the material becomes five millimeters thick just like this one here is five millimeters thick the height from the cut is 8.6 millimeters pretty much identical to the chisel grind that was at 8.6 millimeters also i.e. they're effectively identical because it's trigonometry they're identical the only difference between the two now for replicating the same cut is this portion of the blade here and its angle in relation to the direction of the cut like so now over here we have the chisel grind tilted so that its bevels are in the same perpendicular alignment as the V grind centered into the cut 30 degrees 30 degrees notice how they look identical and this blue line here is at the point in which this one becomes five millimeters thick at the perpendicular to the cut 9.31 millimeters the same as the V grind at 9.31 millimeters very interesting isn't it now this one here which is half the height and of course much more resistant is not a 30 degree grind it is 30 degrees per side it is a 60 degree grind and not even remotely comparable to a 30 degree grind this one here and this one here will have the identical penetration performance end of story so then we get down to the question of why V grind over chisel well you've got to think about the practical application of why a chisel has been designed the chisel has been designed to plane material off the surface 
i.e. you will find chisel grinds in planing tools. You'll find chisel grinds in chisels, funnily enough. All of these tools are designed to lay it on the top of the material and shave material off. So having the flat surface here is supported by what you're cutting and this area here is to bite in and create clean small shaves very easily. Now when you do this of course this side here is supported. This knife here could do the exact same amount of work except you can see that the angle that you have to hold the tool to get the same cut is slightly different but it can do the same job. Now I did a video a long time ago discussing how edge rolling, chipping and damage can happen when you're not cutting correctly and one of the key principles was that when you are cutting into material your edge bevel alignment needs to be perpendicular to the cut that you're making to have a clean cut that will not damage this edge down here. If for example this was tilted even a few degrees to the side and you're slamming it down at a piece of material that is sitting like this and if your direction of force is perpendicular to the material but the blade is tilted to the side a little bit then you're actually going to knock the side of the bevel you're not cutting clean and depending on the hardness and durability of the material you're cutting then what eventually happens is you roll over the edge of the knife and this is what happens when people are chopping in a kitchen or anything like that a person with a high level of skill that can keep perpendicular cuts the edge life of the knife is going to last a lot longer than somebody who has got a very inaccurate cut into the material because they're rolling the edge over so what happens when you take a chisel grind and use it for a general purpose knife? Even when you're making perpendicular cuts straight into the material, the difference between using a chisel as a chisel or a plane and using it as a knife is that when you're making this cut, you have no support here against the weak side of the bevel. All the support is on this side. So if you are even slightly tilted in favor of this bevel when you cut downwards into material, you are very easily going to roll this to that side and create a roll or a burr and dull the knife very, very quickly. You, in effect, to protect the chisel grind from doing that, you need to tilt it and cut like this so that when you're making the cut, it's the same as a bead grind and has equal support on each side to remove the risk of denting it. And as you can see from this V-grind, of course, if you cut down like a V-grind at high force, like this, acting like a chisel, we all know that when you hit something like a bone or a wood or whatever, you have a high chance of damaging and rolling your edge over. Now, the chisel grind has been designed for a specific purpose in life. And, uh, you know, you you find it in sushi knives, you find it in a lot of vegetable knives where you're taking paring slices off the side and you're cutting off one side. You're not cutting into the middle and you want a flat side left. It, it, it's not really, in my opinion, a good general purpose knife. And it's never been designed as a general purpose knife. It certainly makes a more economical knife to make. There's no question about that. If you look at people like Snowdy Knives, for example, they've demonstrated how they can make their Snowdy Boss pre-grind in about 30 seconds. Because you only have to worry about one side and get the one side clean. Very, very simple. So this is just a clarification that... I don't think you should believe me here. You can believe me because I believe that I'm right. But you should seek to determine the facts for yourself and not just believe what you see, especially when people are using pen and paper and pencil drawings and basically saying things that are outright physically impossible. It is physically impossible to have a chisel grind of 30 degrees and say that the height where it will reach full thickness is going to be double that of a V-grind of the same 30 degrees. If you want to misspeak and say 30 degree inclusive chisel against a 30 degree per side, then sure, that would be correct. But that wouldn't be apples with apples and it wouldn't prove the point that was trying to be made. And really the simple fact about knives and everything is you can say it's not science all you like because there is no peer review system like a doctor or a physicist or lots of other things but knives are made based on science based on geometry and if you don't understand that correctly how can you actually build a tool correctly 
you can't is the answer. Because if your foundation of your understanding is wrong, just on basic angles, then you're not going to actually make things correctly. So I hope this is useful to people. Uh, I'm not going to get into any arguments or debates with anyone else on YouTube anymore regarding these things. I'm putting out my information. You can watch my information, watch other people's information. But what I encourage is that you educate yourself. Take whatever knowledge you're receiving and verify. Verify that it's accurate. If you just swallow it hook, line and sinker, then you're basically just learning incorrect information. You know, everything I'm displaying here is easily verifiable. Verif oh, I need a coffee. It's easily verifiable for the simple fact that it's been done in CAD. These are true, accurate measurements of real information. The same as I design a knife for water jet cutting. I am using specific measuring tools here, specific angle measurements that cannot be refuted. There's no pencil and paper and guesswork and fake stuff here. You know? That's not just a pen and paper. This is an angle measurement tool that is showing you specific angles. There's no fakeness here. Anybody can replicate this with any CAD software. And beware of people that draw on pieces of paper and sound like they know what they're talking about. Self-educate. You know, this is a no bullshit channel. And I don't mind if everyone else is wrong or believes incorrect things. But I certainly hope that my viewers of my channel take faith that I know what I'm doing. And I do things for a certain way and that I can explain everything I do to a very high degree if you take the time to email me and ask me the information. And uh, thanks everybody for your support, as always.